for you. Uh, this year is ASCO 2019 back in Chicago. Um, in terms of the lung cancer track, it's interesting. Immunotherapy has kind of faded away. Maybe we've seen all we're going to see for immunotherapy for a while. There's been a lot of negative studies in combination. So this is the year, again, of targeted therapy. So we're seeing some rare molecular subtypes, uh, RET gene rearrangements, blue 667, getting a 60% response rate. We'd previously seen LOXO292 having a 68% response rate. I think one of the really interesting questions is, is there heterogeneity amongst RET rearrangements? And unless we know the makeup of that between these studies, we can't quite compare the two. I'm saying that because I think there actually is heterogeneity. KIF5B RET rearrangements, which is about two thirds of RET rearrangements, have been under responsive before. They're clearly responding to these drugs, but are they responding the same as the others? So if one study has more or less of those, maybe that can be the differences between the two. Uh, Exxon 20 EGFR insertions. Uh, previously, we'd had posiotinib, which I think struggled with its efficacy coming down with each iteration of the data and its toxicity going up. Here we have more mature data on TAC uh, 788, response rate about 50%, dose reduction rate at the 160 milligram doses less than 20%. So they're looking a little bit more like this might actually be a drug that has legs to go forward. Uh, there's a few other things. There are antibody drug conjugates. These are hard to get your head around because they're kind of like smart chemo. They're like a targeted chemo, yet some of them, like ABBV399, is also a MET inhibitor. So the antibody binds, disrupts MET signaling, and in addition delivers a cytotoxic. So if you don't care about MET signaling, you deliver a cytotoxic. If you're addicted to MET signaling, you get a double whammy. And we're seeing um, something like 30, 35% response rate with this in EGFR mutant patients post an EGFR TKI. Probably you might deprioritize it after some smarter TKI, but it's certainly something interesting in that population. And then maybe the last group is, you know, we've taken the EGFR mutant group, we've put them on standard therapy, we've worked on mechanism resistance, and we have two provocative studies, randomized studies. One is if you start on a lotnib and you add in ramacirumab, a VEGFR2 antagonist, seems to prolong the progression-free survival. Now that's very provocative, and yet the challenge in, in the clinic is, well, I don't give a lot nib anymore in the USA, I give osimertinib, and also does the patient want to be chained to an infusion once every three weeks? Is the benefit enough to justify that? The other provocative study is from Japan, saying you've got an EGFR mutation, you could go on gefitinib, or you go on gefitinib and have a course of chemotherapy at the same time. And provocatively, this appears to prolong PFS and overall survival. Are we really ready to add back in chemotherapy to targeted therapy? This is what we're going to be talking about this week.